Welcome back, everyone, to another exhibition match. Replay, Iron Man, your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we have a match between Randy and Izzeride on Red Comet. Red Comet 1.7, the latest iteration art-wise, which actually is about, apparently, a year and a half old, just looking it up. But it's still pretty. Also, it sounds like there's supposed to be, like, lava or something underneath. Or some kind of bubbling sound. Anyway, Izzeride on F-Bots, because apparently they're popular now. And Randy on Rovers, because this is a flat map, and that's what you use is vehicles. So, is a ride. I think I'm for. Is that three ducks right off the bat going for a quick rush? Randy, on the other hand, going for a bit more of a typical dart. Dart Scorcher Mason opener. And then economy going quickly. Seriously, what is that noise supposed to be? Oh, it's supposed to be wind. Ah, uh, okay. Wait, what's the wind value on this map? Not much, because it's entirely altitude dependent, rather than being map dependent. Oh well, a bit of a shame, but yeah, that's sound of wind apparently. Anyway, that being said, back. <laughs> okay, it's getting distracting. Hopefully. They I don't know. Okay, sorry. That, that is really distracting me, that wind sound. I'm not really sure what to say. I mean, at this point, it's just, you know, Israel putting a bit of a contain on Randy, but Randy, they have the fencer. They should be able to push it off. And at the same time, Randy getting a bit of scouting going. They have the dart ready just to see what's up. There's a lot of ducks that are coming in. The fencers are a good choice, but the ducks, you know, in large enough numbers, are going to overpower the fencers. I'm surprised rippers aren't being built, to be honest. That would be my first choice, just in general, but... Fencers aren't a bad option, provided you can cast something else to tank. Randy over with the darts coming in, slowing down the metal extractors. Because, again, it's worth noting, they do work at half power when they are slowed down. Although, to be fair, is that going to kill... Oh, yes, it will. Randy, nice micro off the darts. Oh, not quite. Almost got it. Almost got it. Missed. Didn't pay attention to just the last second, but it still worked out. They managed to slow down the the economy enough for, for his ride. I mean, the thing is that Randy was more... Well, they had the early, early Mason, but it's entirely for energy construction. It's not at all for metal, which is fine. Oh, if Limpet comes in there, does get close enough to get the slow off, and that is going to be enough. The Ducks should be able to wipe out all these fencers. Scorchers coming in to help defend, but it's just not enough. Ducks with their homing missiles do a great job against vehicles, because the, the speed is not going to be enough. All right, that's the thing, is that speed simply doesn't do enough for vehicles against homing weapons. And stuck. Wait, are these in fire... Oh, they're on hold fire. That's weird. He's right playing it like it doesn't... Like, why are you doing... Well, that's weird. Hold fire, hold position on the ducks. Not really sure what the logic is behind that. I guess they just want to make sure they target the right thing. Might be a mistake, though. I don't know if that was intended. But that's what it was, I guess? Sorry, I'm just really confused right now because at this point, the... Ducks. Okay, now it's been... It's been fixed. So I'm thinking, was that intended? Was that supposed to be the way it was? Because, I mean, it's not like ducks have a low fire rate. You can have them on fire at will, and it's not a problem. At any rate. Randy losing Metal Extractor 1. Metal Extractor 2 might be going down. The duck... Oh, trying to play around line of sight, but unfortunately just two angles coming in between the commander and the lotus. And now the Ripper is in play. All these ducks looking like it's going to be pretty dire for them. But really, is that just going to be more ducks? Just going to be more ducks. And another Limpet comes in. I do like the Limpet use, though. We don't see a lot of those, and having a slow bomb is handy. Oh, that's a... Oh. That's a cool little... I didn't actually know how it moved. This cool little trying, like, wheel gear teeth thing going on. Neat idea. As you notice, though, it doesn't burrow. I mean, 
most most bomb type units do burrow or cloak. Limpet is not one of them. Instead, it just it takes a bit to get killed. And it has a pretty wide explosion range. And it's entirely a slow bomb, so even if it gets hit and it's, it has to explode at range, well, it still gets a lot of slow off. Same time, though, Randy with a bunch of Scorchers going over the south side of the map. Just expecting to see nothing, and nothing is what they see. Ooh, does Izzerite see this? Yes, they do. They have radar coverage of this. They do see that the Scorchers are coming in. Forced to retreat. That opens things up for Randy in the center of the map. I don't think Izzerite's quite sure how many ducks they'll need to take out all these Scorchers. I mean, they definitely have enough. I just think they might have more than enough in opening the center a bit too much. I mean, the boy is here. There's Limpet here as well, just in case. But, yeah, the ducks are kind of just... Like, the value of this raid right now is the fact that Randy is forcing Izzerite to retreat. And that's leaving the center open. And leaving their commander relatively open. Rather than any potential gain from damaging the base. Is he Randy retreating, but they've completed their task. Like the, they did what they wanted to do, which is pull the ducks way out of position, opening the center up, leaving their fencers able to just completely mess everything up. Because fencers, while not a terrible choice against ducks, are not the best. Like, ducks will, with the right positioning and numbers, counter fencers. It's just that fencers... The fact that they have the range they do and the fire rate they do does give them a lot more leeway against raiders. And in fact, that's homing weapons. It's got, it gives them more leeway against raiders than most skirmishers have. But the ducks do eventually catch up. The scorchers, two scorchers down for the cost of a duck. Absolutely worth it. That's 80 metal for 250 metal. He's right winning on that attrition trade, but unfortunately losing on map controls. We see Randy has a little over half the map pretty much under their control. They haven't claimed it yet. In terms of metal extractors, but even what they have claimed for metal extractors, it's still an advantage to them. So, is a ride. Feeling confident, they're going in. Duck Archer Boy combo should be able to. Uh, the boy's actually a really smart choice here. It does help take out the Lotus. So, Limpa came in as well, but not nearly enough. As the Scorcher reinforcement comes in on top of the Rippers. Same time over to the north, Israel's commander under heavy fire, forced to retreat. Shh. Not sure if he's going to be able to manage this. Bulk gets coming in to help pull in to defend. We'll be able to tank out the fencers. But Randy decides discretion is a better part of Valor and moves away. Except for a small strike force, which looks like it was intended to go over to the north and start taking on metal extractors. But again, Randy decides, no, I'm just going to just gonna play the long game. I have the economic advantage. Need to get more energy, but otherwise have the economic advantage. So that is that. Same time, Izzeride is oh, getting just a bulkhead heavy army. I guess it's not a bad idea. Against the Fencers, it's not a bad idea. Against the Rippers, it's a really good idea. Though, that might be a moot point. If Izzeride loses their commander, this north side's basically done. Olympus coming in here. No real follow-up force to deal with anything else, though. Just two Olympus coming along here. Should be able to slow down the Fencers, but there's nothing to deal with that. It just slows them down. I mean, it helps Israel's commander, if nothing else, but it's not otherwise that useful. Same time, Scorch is coming in. Looking to take out the bulkheads. Duck's coming to try to defend, but one bulkhead's gone down already. The second one will be falling soon, regardless of the ducks. The ducks do try, though. And at least three bulkheads do survive. So that wasn't nothing. Actually, a lot of damage being dealt to Rain's force in the process. At the same time, do have Israel's commander. They've got to be careful. They are getting distracted by the stuff going over in the center of the map. Their commander is still vulnerable. Needs to move back, and indeed it does. But now the bulkhead's around. The ducks pulling back, trying to find another angle to work from here. But Izzeride under heavy pressure. Ducks looking to flank. Might be able to pull it off. Or at least looking to go for where the fencers used to be. Not actually managing a flank. Though, still, the bulkheads are doing a great job here, forcing Randy's commander out of this firebase. Same time, the ducks... Oh, ten ducks going over this northwest. Randy might be losing their top side of their base, but Israel might be losing their commander. Just barely, the archers come in time to save the commander. That commander... I don't know why it's going for it. No, it's got it. Israel, what are you doing? Oh, I see what they're doing. They're confident in their archers. That's what they're doing. 
Yeah, the ducks, ducks against Ar ducks against Fencer. It's kind of iffy. Archer against Fencer. Archer wins. They have the health. They have the firepower. Like they are going to be able to get in before the Fencers kill them. And now the duck raid coming in over to the northwest. Randy losing a few metal extractors. They have hope or been accessing metal, so it's not the most critical attack that his ride could do, just because of the lack of energy Randy has been accessing. But it's still good. I mean, Randy can use all the metal they have. It's not like this is going to be a waste. It's just... It's not going to be the most devastating thing that Randy's had to deal with. Oof. Ripper doing quite a bit of damage, taking out six, seven ducks so far. Still, though, the ducks that remain should be able to take out a couple of metal extractors before moving on. Actually, these metal extractors over to the south are totally undefended. So Randy gradually losing more and more of their economy while at the same time Izzeride rebuilds their own. And Izzeride still the center has not been taken. No one's really contested that. So right now Izzeride is looking like they are going to get some nice extra raiding going. Ducks however getting stomped by a Lotus. And wait why the wow that duck just wanted uh, a death wish. All right. Actually, that might have been trying to get the Lotus Kill of the Death Explosion of the Duck if it came down to it. Opposite happened, but still, Izride with more reinforcements coming in does have... Doesn't really have an economic advantage, but does have a strong positional advantage. Still, Proxy Tank Factory coming up here from Randy. Okay, I mean, that's a great use of the firebase. You have this area set up, you've gotten a bunch of defenses, your commander's there, it's... Yeah, forward base. Forward Emissary? Is that... Oh, sheesh. Is that what I think? Okay, no, the fire range isn't that high. Wouldn't quite be able to hit from inside the firebase. Wouldn't be able to hit the Israel's main base from there. But still, that's quite a lot. And now, Israel as well over to the south, taking out Randy's basically everything. Randy relying on Reclaim now to stay on track with Israel. Especially with the tank factory on top of everything else. I mean, now the split up in their defense is a little bit tricky to keep going. Like, Izzerai can just assault everywhere on the map. Randy's static economy completely collapsing, thanks to all these archers. Man, Emissary is going to be a problem, but it has given away that Randy has got something up their sleeve. However, I don't know if there's a whole lot that Izzerai can do about this right now. Their, their raiding force has been relying on the fact that Randy has not been defending especially well. They've been throwing one or two lotuses around every metal extractor, if that. So, Izzeride has been able to go around with lone archers or a handful of ducks and take out everything they can find. However, it has worked out. I mean, Izzeride still is considerably ahead in economy. And they can build up the necessary force to siege this out, though... Looks like their plan for that is Boy Bulkhead. Which, considering what they're fighting against, I think I agree. I mean, against Badgers, against Emissaries, I wouldn't go for Grizzly. Same time, though, Fencers are coming in, salting out a bunch of stuff that Israel had expanded out to over on the south side. Archers coming in to help take them out. Archers should be fine, the Conch being the main target. Has the armor giving the Archers enough room to get in, and that should be a bunch of dead Fencers for Randy. Israel, however, did lose about five metal per second on the southern expansions. Still, though, this is going to be a little tricky. I mean, Izzeride can't easily move into this firebase. That's the one thing. They can do a lot of damage outside of it, but this is effectively Randy's new main base. And Izzeride kind of has to respect that. Still, though, if they can take a reclaim, that is huge. Randy has managed to rebuild a fair amount of their static economy, but that reclaim remains what they need. That is the key part of everything here, is getting that reclaim going. And with another salt going in, Kodachi goes down. The Ripper not even able to survive. The boys, are they going to go for it? They are going to go for it. Take out the fencers directly. I, I'm not sure how this is going to work out, but it looks like the fencers just don't have much of a chance. I mean, once the boys hit and slowed them down, there isn't a whole lot left. And Izzeride, with the positioning of the boys, is working out. None of, Very few of them dying. Of course, that firepower remains. The Emissary is still in play, though. Unfortunately, this Lotus is going to finish off all the boys. 
And they've been softened up, and this is just going to finish them. And that is a real shame, honestly. Is right? Should have retreated that and probably repaired them, because... That was good boys. Good, good boys. Still, they're more on the way. And Randy... Oh, Randy actually... Don't let it attack him again. There's nothing to let it reclaim from that. The production is being stymied a little bit over in the main base. But again, another big part of it is the tank factory, and the tank factory is using up whatever the main base vehicle factory does not, or rover factory rather, does not. Always going for south side reinforcement run. I mean, is right looking at... They've, they've cut off Randy's main base from his firebase. This firebase is the main base now. The, the starting location for Randy is... It's been cut off from basically all their main firepower. And at this point, Israel, they are doing well on surround and everything. Randy's relying entirely on reclaim. They do, however, have quite a bit, and this is partly why I'm saying, like, don't throw your boys away like that. I mean, it's... You're giving metal to Randy. Oh, but I see what's going on. It's a lobster. Probably gonna lob it right into the middle of the base here, right, right by the tank factory, I would expect. But that's tricky, because you don't want to lose your units for nothing. And Isra's army is kind of small. But there it goes! Throwing right into it. I mean, it's a solid choice. Walk right in. There it is. Olympus also doing their job. Slowing everything down. That is exactly what they needed to take out that stinger. Still a lot of lotuses to deal with. A lot of lotuses to deal with. Most of them do go down. The firebase has been heavily damaged, but it's not going to be taken out by that one lobster attack. Still, several lotuses do go down, and, that, and the stinger as well, so that opens everything up. Now it's just one lotus and one picket. That's it. That's all that's there defending. So Israel, once they get reinforcements, should be able to just knock that entire area down. I mean, a risky maneuver, but it seems to have worked out. Still another stinger is under construction. Not entirely sure how this is going to work out for Izurai. That If that stinger gets built up, that entire attack was wasted. Because then Randy's going to be able to reclaim all of the metal that just got dropped in. The thousand or so metal that got dropped in from the boys. Still though, boys coming in, getting a bit of reinforcements. I think that Izurai is aware that, yes indeed, they, they have line of sight now. They're aware the stinger is being rebuilt. More archers are coming in. The blitzes. Solid choice to deal with this, though. They're fast enough, the boys can't easily hit them. I mean, until they do. And the archers are not really managing cost wise. Well, kind of managing cost wise. The numbers are enough, it's not as big of a deal. The caretaker, however, does go down, leaving the tank factory essentially unassisted. So Randy's going to be going straight back to pure rover in a second because this forward fire, this fire, forward operating base is pretty much on his last legs. Randy's commander actually looking to be pretty vulnerable, too. In fact, it's the main target here. Which, I mean, kind of makes sense. Getting rid of the factory, that's a lot you have to spend in order to get rid of the factory. Same time, though, Lotus is coming from Israel to provide a little bit of extra support. Setting up for the contest. Oh, I was about to say for the contest potentially to reclaim, but no, the emissaries doing their job, wiping out both contests before they can really get any value off the reclaim fields. So right now, Randy still has a bit of an advantage. They can rebuild this defenses, and they can reclaim this entire field of 4,000 metal. Oh, most of the field of 4,000 metal. And Izzeride hasn't gotten a whole lot of their static economy back from the earlier raids that Randy pulled off. While Randy has essentially rebuilt everything between their main base and, fire and forward base. Not to mention the emissary is doing their job. However, look at the numbers. Izzeride... It's got double the economy, so it is almost a matter of time, unless Randy can do some serious work wiping out the metal extractors. Is a ride is just running away with the game, despite Randy having an attrition advantage. Or at least, that's what it appears. Another lobster is prepared. Not sure they're going to lob into the fencers. And yes, they are! That's exactly what they're going to do. Lob right into the fencers. Should be able to take them out directly, and that... That's solid attack. Takes out several fences for basically free. And the lobster is just hanging out. So with that, a solid chunk of Randy's force goes down. 
Needs to ride, should be able to push forward, continue to assault exactly this all of the forward. Get those rebuilt metal extractors and take them down. Though Randy has basically rebuilt everything here. Again, the reclaim going, they're getting all the metal or the caretakers going. Not as much in the way of strong stack defenses, though. But Ezerite has lost a lot of units to this to this base here. So I'm not sure how well that's going to work out for them if they try to go for it again. Still, boys trying, but the emissaries are saying no. And Doc's continuing to push out. Honestly, like, oh man, I wish Ezerite had built a couple plates. The walk-off time for the ducks is long enough that plates would be worth it. Just for how much faster the units would come out. Like, they'd be coming out twice as fast. I am not joking. For the speed at which they're being built, the ducks would be coming out twice. There'd be twice as many ducks as they had to plate. Just for the time it takes for the ducks to walk off the pad. That's... Bit of a shame that, but yeah, plates are very useful that way. But Israel, I, I mean, they're old school. They don't, I don't think, think about the plates as much because plates, they're like a year, they're a couple years old now. But sort of the way things are, people get very set in their ways about how to play the game. I mean, Israel, they want to keep just pure caretaker on a single factory. But that being said, it's not like it's not working out for them. They are managing to still outpace Randy's army, mainly just because of the sheer amount of units they have. And it looks like while the attrition is still kind of in favor of Randy, it's considerably less so than it used to be. Of course, as it always is, if the blitzes get hit by the boys, they are done. So, Iseride, they are managing to get a nice contain on Randy here, keeping them from expanding over to the north. Have not rebuilt over to the south, though. In fact, I don't see... Oh, there's a conch right here. Pretty much just being used to tank attacks, though. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm not really sure what Israel's plan is at this point. They've been doing a lot of stuff around the map. They've been throwing out a lot of boys around. They've been throwing, a, they've been literally throwing units around with the lobster, but they haven't managed to accomplish much. And Randy able to get all this reclaim, possibly come back into the game. Israel once again going for the main base, and again, I don't understand. The forward base is the one that really matters. That's been producing the emissaries. That's where the emissaries are currently positioned. Like, that is the main target. And these are right trying to take out medley strategies, which, yeah, that's fine. But Randy's, again, relying a bunch on reclaim. Although, to be fair, with this, this, this Faraday. That Faraday. That's a problem. But again, I mean, we got, boy, we got, there's no badgers left, though. So honestly, I don't, well, I guess Fencer, no, Grizzly isn't good, good choice against Fencer. Still, though, with Anthbot, I mean, Lobster is kind of your main siege option, as it were. And it's kind of having a tough time. Ooh, the Limpet almost went off. Oh, wait, Limpet? How many Limpets are there? Ten? Okay, seriously? All right, well, throw a Limpet in. Why not? Gets stunned out by the Faraday, but that's something. If the Limpet dies here, it's actually going to be able to slow down the Faraday enough to be effective. Still, though, Limpet's coming in here. All right, there is the damage coming in. Wait, did he steal? Oh. I think... I think I missed something about limpets here. I think they might deal a bit of EMP damage. Nope, just slow. Okay, that's... Not sure where the EMP came from. Unless... It's, oh, no, the Faraday. That's why. Faraday would have hit something else and then splashed EMP. Well... Forward base, damage the commander down. The factory should be, in theory, falling soon. He's arrived with fourfold economic advantage over Randy. I mean, Randy is desperately trying. They're desperately pushing back. They do have defenses in play, and they are in position, but it's just not enough. The archers will be able to overwhelm them. Boys are able to just completely wipe out the blitzes, and now nothing is going to be stopping them from taking out the tank factory. Not to mention the emissaries went down too during that initial assault with all the limpets. I mean, well played with the limpets. Honestly, I'm glad I never see limpets. I'm glad to see them being used. Because they're a great unit, has been clearly demonstrated. They just don't get a lot of use. I mean, they are 150 metal. It's not terribly expensive. They don't deal a human damage on explosion, but that's slow. This slow is huge. And we saw how that really played off. I mean, they rush in, they can tank, they detonate, 
and the rest of the units come in and basically have to deal with half the army in terms of their damage potential because of the way slow works as they would have otherwise so not quite emp but considering all the other stuff that amphbot has with like lobsters being able to bypass defenses or bypass the walking part and obviously you have still bulkheads and boys able to tank through things yeah it's you know you push in deal much damage and that is that so well played is a ride although well played to randy i did like that forward base and how it was able to be used set up the emissaries and just generally have this position to work from and it did it did put a lot of reclaim on the field for randy but unfortunately it was just Israel's early raids did a lot of work just to slow down Randy's economy. Well, Israel, while they did lose some over the beginning, over the northeast side of the map, it just, it didn't really stick. And that, you know, Israel was able to take it. So yeah, that is that. I think it was Commander Death, basically. Yeah, that was the early game. Right, Randy had a bit of trouble in the early game with the excess, and then the Commander died. But yeah, that's, that is that. So, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you all for watching. And that is going to be that. So, yeah, right. Thanks for watching, and be back next week with more exhibition matches. Unless, no, there's no lobster roll planned. So, yeah, more exhibitions, more exhibition matches next Sunday, same time. Till then, have a good night, everyone.